Star Stop one more time! Ah. Hi, my name is Professor Silver, and you're watching Pokemon Explained, where we focus on the narrative arcs of all our favorite characters from the Pokemon anime. In today's class, we'll break down the complete history of Brock's Marsh Talk, detailing all its battles, storylines, and character development. Marsh Tom joined Brock's team as a Mudkip in a Mudkip mission. Before meeting Brock, Mudkip took care of the baby Mudkip that lived on Old Man Swamp's property. While the babies were intended for new trainers, Mudkip itself was a wild Pokemon and too big to be given as a starter. Mudkip protected the babies from both overly ambitious trainers like May and the evils of nature. When Brock's Lotad and a baby got caught up in a river's current, Mudkip leapt to their rescue. Though Mudkip bristled when Brock offered his thanks, Brock apologized for their intrusion and won Mudkip's trust by over overwhelming it with kindness. He offered it food, rescued its babies from a tidal wave, called it a very special Pokemon, saved it from a precipitous demise, helped free its babies from Team Rocket, and told Mudkip that it filled him with pride. The speed at which Mudkip and Brock bonded amazed Ash. Old Man Swamp took notice as well and asked Brock if he could take Mudkip on his journey as its own friends would soon get trainers of their own. Both Brock and Mudkip loved the idea, with Brock telling Mudkip he'll always have its back. After capture, Mudkip became extremely loyal to Brock and adopted many of his mannerisms. It shed its shy personality, became significantly more friendly, and acted as the voice of reason among the gang's Pokémon. Mudkip mediated disputes between both Corfish and Trico and Corfish and Torchic. While Mudkip befriended all the gang's Pokémon, it formed a unique, brotherly relationship with Lotad. Much like how Brock looked out for his own siblings, Mudkip tended to Lotad's special needs and made sure its intelligence never held it back. Together, Mudkip and Lotad went on rescue missions, attacked a Mecha Spinda, and competed against Brock at a carnival. Their bond was so strong that Lotad's evolution into Lombre did little to change their friendship. Mudkip teamed with Lombre to produce dual water guns, extinguish fires, thwart Team Rocket, power speedboats, and fight in practice battles. Against Corfish and Swellow, Mudkip covered Lombre's back, got struck by Aerial Ice, and dealt heavy damage with Water Gun to Corfish. Besides being Lombre's keeper, Mudkip also replaced Crobat as Brock's tracker. It frequently used its fin to locate people and things through their vibrations. Beyond tracking, Mudkip also helped reunite a trainer with his lost Swampert, extinguished a flaming Flannery, helped rebuild the Lava Ridge Gym, protected Brock from a rowdy Dawn fan, defended Corfish from an angry Breloom, and stopped a rampaging tractor. Though Mudkip provided tremendous utility support, its only full battle in Hoenn ended in defeat when Victor Zigzagoon electrocuted it with Thunderbolt. Mudkip's lack of battling led to it being the last Hoenn starter to reach its second form. It evolved in the battle frontier during an intense training battle with Ash's Grovile. Marshtomp resumed the battle with newly learned Mudshot, but missed Grovile and accidentally struck a Flaffy. After apologizing profusely, Marshtomp fell in love with Flaffy while Brock pursued its owner Mariah. What a gorgeous name! Huh? Though the rest of Marsh Tom's personality remained the same, evolution caused it to adopt Brock's obsession with the opposite sex. Marsh Tom. Despite Brock's hope for a 101 Dalmatians-like romance and Marsh Tom's heroic attack on Team Rocket, Mariah and Flappy broke their hearts by finding love elsewhere. Fortunately, much like Brock, Marsh Tom quickly bounced back from its rejection. During the rest of the battle frontier, Marsh Tom kept itself busy searching for a Crawdon, cushioning Squirtle's fall, entertaining a Wooper, exhibiting good bedside manner, extinguishing a Mecha Slacking, protecting the gang from Seviper, ensuring James's safety, distracting Deoxys, and fighting Team Rocket. During the Gardenia Town Pokemon contest, Marshtomp did its best to help Brock impress the lovely coordinator and breeder, Yuma. In the first battle round, Marshtomp dodged an Absol's Razor Wind, stopped its quick attack, and knocked it out with Water Gun. It then fought a significantly tougher battle against Maze Eevee in the contest finals. Marshtomp opened by protecting itself from Shadow Ball, while Eevee dug underground to avoid Mudshot. After sensing Eevee's underground movements, Marshtomp pummeled it with Water Gun, struck it with Mudshot, landed several tackles, deflected Shadow Ball, dodged several digs, and clogged the battlefield's holes with Mudshot. Despite Marshtomp being able to move faster on mud than land, Eevee hopped atop the arena's rocks, landed several tackles, and blocked Water Gun with Shadow Ball. Though May and Eevee won by points, Marshtomp's performance amazed Brock and filled him with pride. After the battle frontier concluded, Brock left Marshtomp in Pewter City and traveled to Sinnoh, only taking his bonds line. Brock probably left Marshtomp behind so it could play with his siblings and reunite with Ludicolo. 
Marsh Stomp won against Molly Zapsol and lost to Victor Zigzagoon and Maze Eevee by technical decision. Over the course of the series, Marsh Stomp used Water Gun, Protect, Tackle, and Mud Shot. Brock's winning of Marsh Stomp's loyalty and molding of its personality proved his unrivaled skill as a Pokemon breeder. Had Marsh Stomp evolved into Swampert and fought in just one epic battle, I have no doubt fans would consider it one of Brock's most powerful Pokemon. It's likely busy helping Brock tend to the injuries of sick Pokemon as he trains to become a Pokemon doctor. And with that, class is adjourned. I'll be back next week to cover a different character from the anime. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're never late to class. And for extra credit, like this video and let me know your thoughts on Brock's Marsh Talk. Until next time, catch you later.